What's up everybody? Andy from StarWars.com here at Lucasfilm Headquarters. This week, Ezra finally learned of the fate of his parents in Legacy, and now I'm going to show you how it all came together. This is Rebels Recon. Haunted by visions of his parents, Ezra convinces the crew to travel to Lothal to investigate. I know you have to go, but that doesn't mean you have to go alone. But after discovering rebel ships on Garel, the Empire launches a surprise attack, forcing the crew to split up. Now get moving! And Ezra, I hope you find what you're looking for. Safely escaping to Lothal, Kanan and Ezra realize his visions were real, but soon learn they also held a heartbreaking truth. They're dead, aren't they? I'm sorry, son. This week we watched Ezra deal with some heavy issues and got a glimpse into who his parents were. I sat down with the crew to talk about how they tackled these emotional moments and found out why the rebels are always fleeing their bases. Ezra thought that his parents were dead in season one, but we actually learned that they were alive for quite a while after being taken in by the Empire. Was this something that was planned out from the beginning or did it develop more recently? I think Dave had some very definite ideas on what he wanted to do with this. One of the things that he was interested in doing was not having it be this thread that would constantly pull Ezra through his story, because Ezra's story is different. A big part of the original Star Wars trilogy was Luke coming to understand what happened to his parents, specifically his father. And we didn't want to leave it that we were doing a similar story with Ezra. And also ending the possibility of Ezra reuniting with his parents could fuel his story in a different direction. It's good that we deal with it, you know, show him have to deal with the unfortunate and that his friends can be a big support group in this. I think we took something that's a pretty tough issue and we have a kind of hopeful message on it where he does have this forced moment where he sees his parents. Can you tell us more about about exactly what the Bridgers did before they fell into Imperial hands. Ezra's parents were part of a revolutionary group that would basically speak out against the Empire. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to military acts, they were sending transmissions out to inform the populace about evil things that the Empire was up to. It's not like they were significant to the Empire. They were just people causing trouble that were making things politically challenging for the Empire. They weren't fighting as revolutionaries prior to being captured. They were outspoken vocally. Now that the Empire has discovered that the Rebels are on Garel, where are they gonna go next? Since the beginning of season two, the Rebels have been trying to establish a base of operations. Garel was a temporary stop. They really couldn't land all their ships in the same hangar and build the rebellion. I like the idea that the Rebels are constantly on the move. Like when they build Echo Base, they know they can't stay there and they're really willing to abandon it. So we wanted to have this thing where we show it's hard though just to find these places. The Empire can't find you. They're gonna, you know, hopefully get a base before the end of the season. The rebels being on Lothal brought a lot of heat on Lothal, and now they brought a lot of heat on Garel. Now you come to understand why the rebels that we see in the classic films are on uninhabited planets, because you do not want to jeopardize a population by virtue of you fighting for the freedom of that population. Our rebels need a base of operations. They don't have that now, and that becomes a major thrust for the remainder of this season in particular. <laughs> All right, people gather around. I have some very important business news to announce. I have been uh, looking over the numbers, and I think it's going to make perfect financial sense for the entire company to take the next week and change off and go wait in line for The Force Awakens. What you guys say to that, huh? Sounds like a great idea, right? Woo! That's the kind of enthusiasm I was looking for. Grab your stuff. Let's on head over to the movie theater. Except for you, Chopper. Your entire body is literally a recording device. They're not going to let you anywhere near a movie screen. Better stay here, hold down the fort. I'm just kidding! It's gonna be hilarious trying to shove you into a theater seat! Come on, let's go! The Lucasfilm Story Group's Pablo Hidalgo is one with the force when it comes to Star Wars trivia. That's why when one of you had a question about Ezra's abilities, I had to track him down to find the answer. Watch. Hey Pablo, got a second? Hey Andy, what's up? I have a question. Oh, great, great. So, Believe in SWR asks, What does Kanan mean when Ezra has the talent to connect? Aren't all Jedi able to connect, or is Ezra just better at it? Yeah, that's exactly it. Ezra really shows an unusually strong ability to do this, even without training. You could say that that's probably what connected him to Kanan right off the bat in the very first episode. And throughout season one, we saw evidence that Ezra has this really strong natural ability to connect to nature and to things around him. His dark emotions brought forth that giant fear knock, and we're going to see much more of that in season two, Ezra's sort of natural ability to, to bridge with other people. Fantastic. Thanks, Pablo. Have questions about Legacy or any other pressing Rebels queries? Tweet them to at Star Wars using the hashtag Rebels Recon and we'll answer what we can online. Now, how would you like to see an exclusive preview clip from our next episode? I thought you might like that. Enjoy. Oh, oh, oh.
Unlock that ship! He's a Jedi. Look, what's that? I don't think he's on our side. Now, some of you might have noticed that our next episode doesn't air until January. It's true, we're taking a little break. But I heard there's a little movie coming out that'll hold you over. And to further ease the pain, I talked with cast and crew about what you can expect in the second half of season two. Check it out. So this is the final episode before the break. Can you give us any hints about what to expect in the second half of season two? Big things, man, huge things. <laughs> Directly after the break is an episode that no Star Wars fan will want to miss. Our role in the Rebellion has changed and has grown, and so now there are new players involved. Now we're getting to really expand our horizons and take on bigger challenges. I think it's really interesting to get to find out more about each of the characters. So backstory continues to be exposed in the second half of the season. We get more into Sabine's Mandalorian history. We get to see some Mandalorians and how they exist in the time of the Empire. We find out more about Zeb and what his existence is like to be the last of the Lasat, or so he thinks. We get to meet Hera's father, Cham, and we, we find out what happened to Ryloth after the Clone Wars and what his state of being is. I'm loving the introduction of uh, these characters from Clone Wars, too. I really want to see the interaction between them. I've seen it in the scripts, but I really can't wait to see how it all fleshes out. I'm a fan. I, I'm like everybody else. I just I want to see all of it. The Rebels characters take a massive leap forward as far as who they are, and they get really shaken up by the end of this season. It's pretty clear what the season is going to come down to this year. You know, people want a certain confrontation to happen. I don't think you can go a whole season without that confrontation happening. It's just cruel. But yeah, it's everything you hoped and everything you feared. It's the very nature of being a Jedi and confronting the dark side of the Force. Thanks for watching Rebels Recon. We'll be back with another brand new episode in January. Until then, check out our episode guide for Legacy on StarWars.com, download the app, follow us on all our social channels, rewatch the first half of the season, or hey, go see The Force Awakens. Now if you excuse me, I have to go get in line. What's up everybody? Andy from StarWars.com here at Lucasfilm headquarters. This week we saw Ahsoka Tano come back with a vengeance in the future of the Force and now I'm here to take you behind the scenes. So cue the theme music, Rebels Recon starts right now.